Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this subject that people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so many favors and gifts and ni'mats to you he has bestowed you with so many ni'mats they are infinite without limit, even if you want to gather them, collect them, count them, bring forth many computers or calculators, machines, but you cannot count the number of ni'mat that Allah Ta'ala has given. So many ni'mas and favors Allah Ta'ala has given that you cannot count. There are two types of ni'mah that Allah Ta'ala has given. One is the body of the human being itself is a name of Allah. If we look at ourselves, if we look at our physical body, look inside your body, then it's a collection of ni'mats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the body, the human body. <clears throat> and it's such a ni'mah, the human body, that apart from Allah, nobody can give this. Apart from Allah, you cannot get the body and its functions from anywhere else. Can somebody manufacture an eye? Show it to us. You might get the glasses, but you can't get the eye. And the nose, can anyone manufacture the nose inside the veins and the arteries in the nose? If we look inside the body of a human being, look at the system of breathing. We have the kidneys. We have the lungs. In other words, you cannot, we cannot understand, and at this moment in time, in this era, we have advanced research regarding the body and its functions. But nobody, nobody can understand what Allah Ta'ala has given to us. And that's why this is a ni'mah. And then, it's not just a little bit, but we cannot, as I said, we cannot count how many nemas. Let's take the head, the head of an individual. Can anyone count how many hairs you have on your head? Nobody can count how many hairs you've got on the head. It's not possible. This is another name of Allah, the hairs on the head. When Allah Ta'ala says this is a challenge to mankind until the day of judgment, that nobody can compete with Allah, whether even if you don't believe in Allah, but this challenge then accept it and reply to Allah, subhanAllah. That if you cannot fulfill the challenge, then believe in Allah, why don't you believe in Allah? If you think that something can compete with Allah and challenge with Allah in terms of creation of the body, this is a clear delay. So, so one ni'mah that Allah Ta'ala has given is the body, which has so many ni'mas. And secondly, the world we are living in. Allah says, look at the ni'mas of the world. So there are two types of ni'mah. One is the physical body of the human being. And secondly, the world we are living in itself is a ni'mah, Allah says. It's also a, a gift, a beautiful gift. And you can physically see that. Allah says, one is the body, and fusikum inside, and one is dahir. The, let's take the wind, let's take water, let's take food, let's take drinks, let's take the honeybee. Can somebody manufacture the honeybee? Yes, which, about which Allah Ta'ala said is shifa, and how much we eat, it's coming, and we're eating. Allah Ta'ala says, fine, so let's show me a factory where you can manufacture the honey yourself. You've got uh, factories all over the world, you can get fake honey. Yes, after a few days, you take two spoons and then from underneath, 
something comes out from that. So see if you can make honey and compete with Allah. Allah says, it's a small wasp, a small bee. And we're making aeroplanes nowadays, you're doing research and science and technology. Allah, Allah says, fine, fine. But Allah says, manufacture a honey bee that can make honey for you and then your factories will run. Has any human being until today manufactured honey? Tell me. Nobody can. Nobody is able to. And the challenge Allah gives is that you cannot even count, uh, just count how many chickens there are in the world today. Count for me. Okay, let's leave that for a second. Yeah, that from morning we have breakfast, two eggs, fried eggs with bread, with cheese. Yeah, we eat food in the morning, isn't it? And we have toast, bread, and on the, on the toast we have different things. And two fried eggs please, we say in the morning. So Allah Ta'ala says, tell me in the world, how many eggs are there in the world today? Do you count how many eggs Allah Ta'ala has given to us on a daily basis? So brothers, this is Allah's challenge to mankind. This verse that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the Qur'an, it's a challenge for which reason? What's the reason behind this? The reason for this is that, look here, even Allah Ta'ala hasn't even mentioned Himself. Has Allah Ta'ala mentioned Himself? He says, SubhanAllah. Allah says, I'm just mentioning my ni'mas here. But what a great point here that I'd like to explain to you. When a person favors somebody with something, for example, somebody gives me a house or a car, or he favors me with some money, he gives me a loan, he gives me some cash, then inside the human being there's a natural trait, just like Allah has made us, that one is, one is to forget when somebody is favored. You understand? To understand and one is to forget and one is to, to appreciate. This is my experience. If you like it, fine. If not, then leave it. But what I understand, I'll explain to you. One is to forget from your mind. That's different. That's different. That happens. You sometimes forget. But to not appreciate, that is very dangerous. To not value and appreciate. So it says that a person, he has is, he is finished appreciating his sense of appreciation and gratefulness. That's different. So when a person favors another human being, he gives you something, gives me something, gives me a house, or he helps somebody, assists somebody, then inside the human being there's a, there's a habit that he doesn't just forget. Rather, beyond forgetting, he forgets appreciating. Stops appreciating. For example, you see someone's favored someone, and that person, he turns his face away from him. Who are you? I don't know you. You didn't do nothing for me. Yes? Oh, no, no, I did this. You didn't do this for me. And he goes, takes a U-turn. He forgets doesn't even appreciate. We see this commonly in the world today. So even if he forgets from his mind, but he doesn't forget the human being, he doesn't forget from his mind, he forgets appreciating and being grateful. So logically if we see, when somebody, or for example, when you remind someone that he favored you, he helped you, then directly you will say his name, say, mm, no, 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 he didn't. But when you say to him, remind him, that you know this car, that you will mention to that person what he gave to you. You will remind that person when he gives you, look at this car you've got. Do you know who gave this car to you? Do you remember? Do you know that what a big favor he gave to you? They'll say, oh yeah, yeah, he gave me the car, yeah. Then he'll remember that person who favored him. First he'll mention the product. Yes, directly if you tell him, he won't remember the favor. But when you remember the item that he gave to you, that he gave to you, then immediately then he will wake up. And he'll feel that, oh yes, 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 this was his thing that he gave to me, I'm using it. Then he'll feel ashamed, and then his consciousness will come to being. This is a deep point I'm explaining to you. So this is Allah's kitab, the Qur'an. And Allah Ta'ala, to waken us up, to wake us, to make us wake up, He is, he is alerting us through this message in the Qur'an. Allah is not mentioning His name. That it's me, Allah, who gave to you. Rather, Allah is mentioning the ni'mas that He's given to us. The gifts and the favors. So the same meaning applies here. That via the ni'mas, Allah Ta'ala is calling us to Himself. He's inviting us to Himself. That this eye you're looking at, yes, yes, I'm looking. Who gave you this eye? Allah asks. Then who will you remember? Allah you will remember. So Allah Ta'ala here is mentioning His gifts and favors. That when you remember the ni'mas I've given to you, then who will you remember? You will remember your Rabb, your Lord, your Creator. So the ni'mas, the favors, the gifts that Allah Ta'ala has given to us, this mention, this point Allah is saying, is that the human being when he forgets Allah, and for this reason understand this, this strict point here, the human being when he forgets Allah, 
obviously, then he will be disobedient to Allah. And he's free, detached from his Lord. He's finished. So there are two types of recognition in a human being. Remember this. Yes, one is the, when a person stops recognizing and realizing, he loses so much that people, they stop believing in Allah. He says, no, there's no God. This is me doing this. I created this. Technology created this. This is our science, advancement, progression. We have done this, etc. One is a person who forgets Allah so much and the favors of Allah that he stops believing Allah. So much he's lost out. He says from his verbally that there's no God. There's no God. And he does shirk with Allah. That's how far his recognition has gone. And his appreciation. He said, no, 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 this is no name of Allah. But... The other group of human beings are such that due to the barakah of the kalima, those people who have the, received this kalima and accepted this kalima, even those people have stopped appreciating Allah, but they're not that dead that they've forgotten Allah. This is the barakah of the kalima. The kalima person, the person who believes in the kalima, he will never reject Allah. Rather, what will he do? He will remember Allah at that time. Sometimes Ramadan has come or Hajj has come or maybe some issue or some day has come that he has to celebrate or remember. At that time, he will sometimes remember Allah. Otherwise, he has no connection with Allah either. That's, he, his lights have gone dim and he's forgotten and his recognition has gone down. So how will that person then remember Allah's favors if he's so distant from Allah? So all the nemas Allah Ta'ala will give to him, he will utilize them in a wrong way. He will go in the wrong direction with the name of Allah. In the wrong way he will utilize him. And this is Allah's punishment. The person who's forgotten Allah, then Allah Ta'ala makes him forget his ni'mas as well. So that he utilizes them in the wrong way and he can't use them in the right way. This is the punishment Allah Ta'ala gives to a person who forgets Allah. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, so the reality is what? Is that the real way is to remember Allah. That's the real way, the proper way. Don't forget Allah. Don't forget Allah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ Say subhanallah, subhanallah. The Allah says, ذِكْرُ الله, My remembrance is such a fantastic method in the Qur'an. Allah time and time again said, Do my dhikr, do my dhikr, kathir dhikr, high quantity. Not to remember me, Allah says, Allah says, I'm no, in no need for you to remember me. Allah is not in need that we sit down and say, Allah, Allah, recite His names, do tasbih, etc. Allah says, I have no desire for this, that we, that there are, there are, there are creation, uh, forms of creation that remember Allah so many times of the walls remember Allah, the doors remember Allah, the air remembers Allah, the soil remembers Allah, the water remembers Allah. Everything in the creation that we see, they all remember Allah. They all remember Allah. But forgetful is He, the human being for whom Allah made this world. He has forgotten. But the things that were made for the human being, they will do the dhikr of Allah. Yes, amazing contrast. Eh? It's an amazing contrast, isn't it? That the dhakir who should be the human being, and that he's using things in the world, the resources that were made for him, they're remembering Allah, and the person who should be remembering Allah, he's forgotten Allah. Everything in the universe right now is doing Allah's dhikr. Atoms, particles are doing dhikr of Allah. There's nothing that's forgotten Allah. The Quran has mentioned this. Yeah, Yusuf Hulilai Mafi Samatu Mafilad. Everything in the heavens and the earth is calling out to its Lord. And Ghafil is who? Negligent is the human being. When he's negligent, he forgets Allah, then he's forgotten Allah. He's disconnected. He's forgotten everything of Allah. So that's why Allah time and time again says in the Quran that you, human being, remember me, remember me when you keep on remembering you me, then I will remember you. Allah says, when I will remember you, then my name as you will also remember at the same time. And me and you, Allah says, our connection will stay steadfast. And you will never be disobedient to me. That's why Allah says, Tuflihun the dhakir, the person who remembers Allah, never forgets Allah. There's no other purpose or meaning of dhikr. The Sufis who do dhikr, the shaykhs who host dhikr, this not for piety or to do weird things and weird feelings. No, the, the purpose behind doing dhikr of Allah is when a human being remembers Allah, when he forgets, he's finished. So there's a tariqah Allah Ta'ala has prescribed that you can't forget me if you do my dhikr continuously. 
And Allah said this, Allah has given her time, that if morning and evening continuously you remember me, Allah says, Bukra Taum wa Asila, Allah has given her schedule, that in the morning when the day starts, remember me at that time, and then do what you need to do in the day, then in the evening after Isha, after Maghrib, Allah says, sit and remember me again, in the evening, in the night. And that's dhikrullah, that's the definition, nothing else. But, what's our situation? Why have we forgotten Allah? Our situation upside down, and for that reason we've forgotten Allah. So it's lazim, essential dhikr for us nowadays, today. Let's look at our condition, our lifestyle, our circumstances. That what is my connection with my Rabb today? Am I doing those things that Allah has told me? Allah says, don't lie, and I lie. We lie. Allah says, don't oppress anybody. We oppress people. Allah Ta'ala says, don't do dhulam. We do dhulam. Whatever Allah Ta'ala has said, don't do this. We do those things. And the things Allah has instructed to do, we don't do those things. So where is the connection between us and Allah? Just to eat halal food, is that the connection between us and Allah? Just to eat halal food? Or we just do some small amal and then we make a connection? No. Total connection with Allah is this, that Allah Ta'ala's hukam, ahkams, we live obediently our lives according to those orders. That's deen. That's deen. And the person who follows deen, he will never be a wrong person. He will never do wrong to anyone, oppress anybody, do dhulm. He will never do bad actions, evil actions. He is sadiq, righteous, ameen, trustworthy. In front of him will be quran e hakim he will live his life according to the Qur'an. So the cure that the Qur'an is prescribing us towards the right path, that understand and identify Allah Ta'ala's namas, that the namas of Allah says, I'm mentioning them to you so you can wake up, because you will remember my namas, you will appreciate my namas and value them. So obviously if you value my namas, Allah says, then why these you will appreciate your Rabb, your Lord. So the purpose is what? Allah says, don't forget me, keep remembering me. Keep remembering me, subhanAllah. And Allah Ta'ala says further in this verse in the end, Inna Allah, Inna Allah, Ghafoorur Raheem. So here Allah Ta'ala is talking about His ni'mas and His gifts and favors. Why is then Allah Ta'ala concluding with Ghafoorur Raheem? There's nothing about sin here, is there? Subhanallah. Say Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala is not mentioning an event about sin. So why is Allah saying, I am, I am forgiving? Ghafoorur Raheem. Allah says, My ni'mas, my favors, remember them, you've forgotten them. So many ni'mas, the untold ni'mas, Allah says, breathing, walking, traveling, everything is a name of Allah. Allah says, you're wandering around the world, but you have not identified who has given you all of these things, Allah says. So my ni'mas, Allah says, you are not doing and living and utilizing my ni'mas the way I've told you to. You are looking with your eyes. You're watching, but what are you watching? You are watching and looking at those things that I've told you, they are prohibited for you. These are sinful. I don't like this. That with this eye I've given to you, you do this action, you do this deed, you're doing those actions with your eyes. So what are you doing to my namas? You are not appreciating my namas. Allah says, this eye Allah says, I gave to you for this purpose, for this purpose, subhanAllah. This tongue I gave to you for a purpose, Allah Ta'ala says. For a reason. Every organ, part of your body, limb, should be used according to my hukum, Allah says. I have given this to you. I am the owner of your body, Allah says. When you live your life according to the way I've told you to use your body, then you are valuing the body I've given to you, Allah says. You're appreciating it. You're fulfilling the rights of the body. But that, that same name when you utilize it in the wrong way, according to your nafs and your desires... In reality, you are disobeying Allah, Allah says, and you are ungrateful for the ni'mah that I've given to you, your body. So ni'mahs, we are watching, looking with our eyes, but we're doing it according to the Allah Ta'ala wants us to use the eye. No, that means we don't value Allah Ta'ala's eye that He's given to us, and that's what Allah Ta'ala is making us. He's making us alert to this fact. So here, in this verse, Allah Ta'ala concludes, in Allah Ghafoor Rahim. Now here, there's no event, no story about sin. Yes, that's right. But the reality is this, Allah Ta'ala is saying that the ni'mas I've given to you, the rights I've given to you, the body I've given to you, Allah says, I've mentioned to you, there are infinite ni'mas given to you in the world. And if you fulfill the rights of the ni'mas, that same right due to which the purpose for which I gave you this ni'mah, you've utilized it, spent it, used it correctly, then Allah says when you do that action, then Allah Ta'ala will forgive all of your sins if you utilize the ni'mas correctly. That's what Allah is saying, إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ rahim. Yes, this condition that Allah has given. So in other words, 
Allah Ta'ala's ni'mas that He's bestowed to us, if we utilize them according to Allah's preference and decision Allah promises, then all of your sins I will eliminate. Eliminate. Then even then a human being sins, isn't it? Because we are human beings. Allah says, don't worry. Don't worry. You just utilize my ni'mas correctly. The sins that you commit in the future, Allah says, I will continue to forgive them. As long as you use the ni'mas correctly. Allah says, la ghafoor rahim Subhanallah, Allah comes to Rahim. Not will I just forgive you, but I'm also Rahim. Your ni'mas I will increase and multiply more. You utilize the eye properly. You look, use your sight properly. Allah says, this ni'mah that I've given to you, then I will multiply, strengthen it, increase it, Allah says. What does that mean? What does that mean? So will you have to wear glasses then? No, 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 no. Allah says, then this na'am of the eyes to increase it, Allah Ta'ala says, then this eye, alhamdulillah, it will become that eye, that it won't just be restricted to the world, but rather it will start to experience the sights of Allah's tajalliyat, Allah's magnificence. It won't just read the Qur'an, it will see the nur and the magnificence in the Qur'an. And it will understand the meaning of the Qur'an. It will realize and recognize the reality of the Qur'an. If you value one eye, I'm talking about, the same way, the whole body of a human being, if we utilize it for the purpose Allah Ta'ala has defined, Allah says, I'm Rahim, then I'll multiply, strengthen it for you. Subhanallah. Do you understand what I'm saying, brothers? Do you understand the point of today? So Allah's ni'mas that He's given to us, there are so many, we cannot, we'll lose count. And alongside Allah Ta'ala says, if you utilize the ni'mas, the gifts, the favors are given to you, then you are grateful for the ni'mas I've given to you. If you utilize them correctly, then Allah says, I am your Rabb, then I will say to you, that when you come back to me, you will be without the sins. And the ni'mas that I've given to you, the favors, the whole body of yours, they are and barakat beyond barakat, you will have in your body. If you do things correctly. Now look here, that such... Uh, you can say sicknesses nowadays and problems and difficulties. Our whole body we have sometimes stomach ache, hands wrong, fingers wrong. Everything Allah has given to us. But Allah has given us the cure that don't do those actions with your body and limbs that I've told you are prohibited for you. Don't do that Allah says. And then Allah says, then see I am how ghafoor and rahim if you follow that guidance. Allah says, وَلَا إِن شُكَرْتُمْ لَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah says, do my shukr. Do my shukr and then see how I'll multiply the ni'mas. I will increase them. I will increase them. So this is the mention Allah Ta'ala has given to us about His ni'mas, His gifts. This is one ni'mah that Allah Ta'ala has told us. So today, I'd like to request or ask you about that ni'mah. What about the accounting that will take place for that ni'mah? What will be the reward for that ni'mah? What will be the greatness of that ni'mah? That ni'mah that Allah Ta'ala has just once has said one thing. And that is a ni'mah as well. That ni'mah Allah has mentioned once. And Allah Ta'ala hasn't with any other ni'mah attached this mention. The whole world, all the ni'mahs of Allah, Allah says, لَحْ تَحْسُوهَا That they are infinite without, you can lose count the ni'mahs in the world. But with none of them, as Allah Ta'ala said, Attach this one name just for this one name Allah Ta'ala said for one name of what Allah Ta'ala said that this name I've given it to you and I favored you Allah Ta'ala says I favored you imagine this name what is that name that Allah Ta'ala said that I favored you helped you about no other name as Allah Ta'ala said I favored you the sky heavens stars sun ocean seas water everything in the world the universe all the name must put them to one side but why the one name about which Allah Ta'ala said that this is my favor upon you ahsan subhanallah laqad min allahu al mu'minina say subhanallah say subhanallah laqad man allahu Alal mu'minin. What is that name? Allah Taala says, "Khal is purely for the mu'minin." Allah says, "I've given this name for the mu'minin, purely for the believers." This one soul name I've given. Allah says, and this is a favor of mine upon you. Allah says, "Imagine that name." That name. Allah says, "This is my favor upon you, a gift, a present that only for the mu'minin I've given." So let's look at this. That what level we should be grateful of that nema for that nema, how much we should value it, appreciate it. 
on which level, how much we should stretch ourselves to value and appreciate this name. Allah is mentioning in the Quran. That favor I've made for you for the mu'mineen, Allah says, my favor upon you. What is that? What is that? Isba'asa fihim rasulun. Subhanallah. That favor is what? That to you I gave my Habib such a Rasul I gave to you, Allah says. Sallallahu alayhi wa Subhanallah. So Allah, His Nabi that He sent to us, and that Nabi Allah has given us iman, belief on His Nabi, and from our tongues, Alhamdulillah, Allah made us say, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Allah enabled us to say this. Allah says, this is a massive favor of mine upon you, that no other favor in the world can you compare. This is the greatest favor. Allah has given you eye, no favor. Tease, no favor. Stomach, no favor. Mouth, no favor. Eating food, wind, air, Bread, flour, Allah says, no favor is, none of these are favors upon you, but this is the biggest favor I've given to you, that I gave you my Rasul, Allah says, my Rasul, subhanAllah. Oh, what a great statement. What a great point. So my brothers, now we are those people who Allah Ta'ala is mentioning in the Quran, that I've given you my Rasul. So tell me brothers, this favor of Allah, how much do we value Allah's favor of Rasul Allah? How much do we value this? How much do we appreciate this favor Allah has given to us of Rasulullah? That all the other gifts Allah has given to us, our body, our functions, our limbs, about which Allah says that they are infinite without any upper limit. You lose count about those Allah said, all this beforehand that we discussed. So what about this greatest nama? How will Allah Ta'ala put us into the accounting? Allah said, I gave you the greatest favor, special favor I gave to you, how much did you value it? How much did you appreciate it? How much were you grateful for this name of Rasulullah? Shakartum lazidan nakum. So we understand how to be grateful for the, the common things, the common gifts. We've, we've learned that today. The eyes, how we should be grateful. The mouth, how we should be grateful. That the, we would only be grateful at that time when according to Allah's order, we utilize those organs and the limbs. So even here is the same point. Allah Ta'ala says, the greatest favor I gave to you about Rasul Allah says, I gave to you, you are his ummatis. So how will you be grateful for Rasul Allah? Yes, uh, people today are very grateful for this favor of Rasul Allah, isn't it? People today around us are very good for my brothers. Shaitan and nafs is a big opposition. Shaitan and nafs are a very big opposition. Very big force to follow the true way, the right way. Remember this is very difficult. Until that time, until the, you don't have a guide, then life is very difficult. I'm not telling you my statement here. I'm telling you my sheikh's statement. I'm presenting to you my teacher's statement. You can experience this in your life, this statement. Those people who don't have true guides, who don't have honest guides, قُولُوا مَا الصَّادِقِينَ Like the Qur'an prescribes. If you want to be saved, then you need true, honest, amin, trustworthy guides. This path of the world, my husband said, this is very difficult path in the world, that you will have very severe enemies on this path of nafs and shaitan, they will deviate you. They will take you off the track. Yes, but if you have a true, trustworthy guide to guide you, who you are following and you value his friendship, then the Quran guarantees, Qunu ma'asadiqeen. Sit with him, travel with him, go along the path with him. Allah's promise you will become a muttaqi with this person. You will become a muttaqi. Faithful of Allah. You understand my point, what I'm saying? Do you understand the point? So here the biggest question arises now is that we. Us people, this great favor of Allah, of Rasulullah that He gave to us, the Prophet Allah, how much are we grateful for this greatest of favors? Oh, we say, you know, no, Allah, we're grateful. Yes, yes, I do this, I did this, I did that. What can I say? You'll understand whatever a person can do, he does. And all of this you're doing for yourself. Eating food, yes, and nats and nasheeds. This is your nafs which is saying that I'm doing so much to be grateful. For Rasulullah this is not being grateful to Allah. For Allah's Nabi that He sent to us. Such a great name of Allah. We are not being grateful. And remember that if you are ungrateful for this greatest name of Allah, Rasulullah, and we die, then no way can we be forgiven. Never. Remember this point. Never. This is not a minor point. That Allah Ta'ala's greatest favor of Rasulullah that He gave to us. And if 
And if this ni'mah, this favor, if we are grateful and we depart, then about normal gifts Allah has given to us in Allah Ghafur Rahim, then this name of Allah, what is the reward Allah will give? Compensation, imagine what a compensation Allah will give. فَتَبِيُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah says in the Quran. فَتَبِيُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah says this name of Rasulullah, if, you, if you're grateful for it, what is the reward you'll get? Allah's mahmubiyat, Allah's beloved and Allah's love, you'll attain Allah's nearness. Allah's mahmubiyat you will get. So in other words, that a person who's grateful to Allah, for the gracious Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah sent to us. If we are doing shukr in the right way, we appreciate him, value him. Then Allah Ta'ala says, who will those people be? They will be my beloved servants when they're raised in the hereafter. My beloved servants. So the greatest rank will be those people. Because remember, the greatest name Allah gave of Rasulullah Sallam, they, they were grateful for that in the best way. Do you understand my points, brothers? Yes. So in this day and age, in this era, for this generation, this is the right and correct message I'm giving to you if you want to write, write death. Only those people will be on the right path on the hereafter. Successful will be those people who understand the rights the ni'mah Allah gave to us of Rasulullah and fulfill that right. Otherwise the rest is from I did this, I recited this, I did that, this many hajj, this much. Nothing will succeed. Nothing will succeed. Allah Ta'ala first and foremost say that this ihsan I gave to you of Rasulullah, how grateful were you for this? Yes, is Allah, I went on conferences and marches and I did this, don't ask Allah. To this extent, people say today, good people, they are forced to think, that, am I on the right path? Am I practicing the right thing? Or shall I do something else? Because too many people are on the wrong way. The quantity is higher. There's a lot of drama, fake practice of people even on the right path. They start getting doubts and confused. That, am I on the right path? I'm telling you the right thing here. That that right path has not remained today. I will say to this, and even those people today who didn't believe in, they're starting to speak out loudly. Because today we're in that generation, that we know in the generation of what? Internet, online, everywhere you can experience, see what is someone saying and doing. Fast communication, and people's brains have been overtaken. But beware, this gathering is a special gathering, brothers. This majlis, this is the gathering of Allah's dhikr. Alhamdulillah, haq, truth. This gathering will always communicate the truth. Maybe you will see, feel it's bitter, but it will penetrate your hearts, inshallah. Maybe never will you leave here confused, am I on the right path or the wrong path? Because Quran is telling you what's the right path. The Quran is telling you. We're reading the Quran right up till now, today. Yes? So here, the needle is in the middle. Allah Ta'ala is asking us that the greatest name I've given to you is my Prophet Rasulullah. How were you grateful for this name? How did you return this name I gave to you? Because there's no greater gift than this I've given to you. Allah says, I gave this name to you, O believers. If we stand Allah, I pray this much Allah, go to one side. Allah will say, Allah, I read this much Quran, go to one side. This many hajj I did, go to one side. This many marches I went to Allah, this many nasheeds I recited. This many actions I did. Allah will say, all of you go to one side. All those who call them those ashiks and lovers, all will be asked the same question. Every man will claim, Allah, I'm a lover of Rasulullah. Allah, I love your Rasul. I believe in him. And I did this action. And this was my gathering. And my people and people were running after me. And they accepted me. Subhanallah. Allah has clearly put the sketch out there what success is. And Allah has told us the tariqah, the methodology, the whoever adopts this methodology, then he really has given the return for this gift that I've given to him. So it's very simple formula and method for us. How to be grateful. If we want to be grateful for the name of Rasulullah, then just do what Allah Ta'ala is prescribing and you'll be grateful. But the tariqah that Allah has given to us, we have rejected it. We have shunned it and we've totally suppressed it and we put it to the side behind our backs and the tariqah shaitan's prescribed to us, we have elevated it. Oh, shaitan. Yes, yes, we like that. And this is how we are saying we're grateful to Allah. And we are openly reciting this verse and we reject it. So then let's read this verse that Allah has given to us. Allah says, I've given you my Rasul. I sent him to you. And this is my greatest favor on the mu'mineen. And alongside that, Allah Ta'ala, what does he say further? Allah says, that when my Rasul came to you, whatever was given, and I sent him to you, what does he do? What does my Rasul do? Subhanallah. What does he do? 
For which reason did I send him? What actions did he do? What did he give to you? What did he bring to you? That I'm saying he's a biggest favor to the believers. Allah Ta'ala says first and foremost, the Qur'an he gave to you. Rasul came with what? Qur'an, the kitab of Allah. And then Allah says, وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ تَزْكِيَا And then what does Allah say? وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Not just وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْقُرَانَ He didn't just come to give you Qur'an and read the Qur'an. وَالْحِكْمَةَ Allah says. Alongside the Qur'an was my hikmah. The whole sharia was prescribed to you. Fiqha was given to you. Jurisprudence was given to you. Law was given to you. Very clear messages come to us. That if you want to repay this favor I've given to Allah says, if you want to fulfill the rights of this favor I've given to you, then only that will be my grateful servant Allah says, who does this action, that Allah's Rasul, the Kitab, He brought to you, the Quran. And wal hikmata that he gave to you, sharia, fiqa, jurisprudence, the law, the principles that emanate from the Quran, and not just by reading, but amlan, physically, practically, he implements step by step. Step by step, just like Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala has said. Somebody asked that, what is the akhlaq of Rasulullah? She said, kana khuluqul Quran, the Allah's Nabi, his actions, Conduct was the Qur'an. The Qur'an was Rasulullah Sam. That he is, the, there's the Qur'an, the physical book, and Rasulullah Sam's life is the tafsir. There's the Udrval in the Qur'an, and Rasulullah Sam's life is the Amal. So Allah says, Wa yual, wa yu'allimhu al-Qur'ana, wal hikmata, wa yuzakihim. Allah says, these are the verses of my Qur'an, and the Prophet Sallallahu will recite this, this verse, this verse, this verse, and every single verse of the Qur'an, he physically demonstrated to the Sahaba Ikram. He explained, fiqh, jurisprudence, sharia, hikmah, sunnah, wa yuzakihim as well. The third function, that human being who purifies himself, cleans himself, washes himself. How? Which way? Not with water. Wa yuzakihim. Not with perfume. Not with fragrance. Not with soap. But with what does a Muslim clean himself? Tazkiya. The meaning of tazkiya is mentioned in this verse. Wa yuzakihim. Tasawwuf. Branch of Islam. Sufism. What is Sufism? What is tasawwuf? What is the meaning of it? What does it tell us? What does it teach us? It's not dancing, spiritual dancing, singing, trances. No, no, no. Oh, he does this and the dervishes and they dance. The meaning of Sufism is weird today. But Sufism comes from tazkiyah, which means to clean yourself. It comes from the Quran. From Allah's kitab, tazkiyah. Where you zakihim, washed, cleaned, pure. This is the meaning of tasawwuf. If we've given it the wrong name, wrong definition, wrong practice, one is the right way, one is the wrong way. In the world today, everything, you will see the right thing and the wrong thing. You have the right tazkiyah, the wrong tazkiyah. One is the right honey and the fake honey. The right milk and the fake milk. So the sahih tazkiyah I'm explaining to you, which Allah is saying, the rest is fake. The rest is a drama. But the Qur'an is explaining what is the right tazkiyah. If I say, I'm a sheikh and I go to a sheikh, I want to do tazkiyah. I want to learn this here. So what will be in your mind? Oh, people start all this music and dancing and jumping up and down and qawalis and this is Tazkiyah. Is this Tazkiyah? No, no, let's leave that. If there's a gathering of dhikr, will that just be Tazkiyah? No, not dhikr on its own. Doesn't mean Tazkiyah. So what is the meaning that you go to a sheikh, a teacher? What's the meaning, definition of Tazkiyah? How do I know I'm getting purified or I want to get clean? Because this verse tells us this. The meaning of purifying, cleaning, is that the Qur'an is given to us, Rasulullah recited it, implemented it, demonstrated it, he explained to us the hikmah, and fiqh, and jurisprudence, and shariat, and the tariqahs of the sunnah that he demonstrated to us, that the whatever I'm doing, do the same. Whatever I'm doing, well, he explained to us how to pray salah, he explained to us everywhere, raful yadain, raising the hands, I mean loudly, I mean softly. There's nothing to dispute here. These are fiqhi masail. There's no big quarrel here or dispute. But here, this is a very big point. That instead of salah, that, for example, if I don't go, if I don't face towards Kaaba and I face somewhere else and pray salah, if I do a U-turn, and, or I take a U-turn in my deen. So this is what's happening nowadays. Taking a U-turn. That we have turned our face away from the deen. 
these and point very easily we've turned our face away from the deen. Yes, that for example you see marches and demonstrations and we have Rauda Mubarak people say that oh I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that because they think there's tawab here. Yes, we are ashiks and lovers and we're celebrating etc. I'm not criticizing anyone here. But I'm just generally speaking, does the Qur'an say that we should do this? The Qur'an explains, yes, celebrate, big favor, great day, celebrate it. Itself the Qur'an says, that such a great favor upon you that I sent my Nabi to you, Allah says. So that day Allah Ta'ala sent His Nabi to us, the great favor, should we not remember that day? Celebrate it definitely. No problem. We should remember it. We should commemorate it. What is celebrating it? To remember that day. To remember that day. To recollect that day. That Allah's Nabi came on this day. But how? How? Because we are very far from that generation now. So it's lazim for us. It's essential for us. Allah Ta'ala is making us wake up. He's reminding us time and time again. I've given you so many things. Allah Ta'ala is reminding us that He gave us everything. The Qur'an today is reminding us that Allah gave you the namas in the same way, in the same tariqah Allah's Nabi, we should remember him on this day that we've forgotten in reality why did he come. So we should remember those things, the reasons why Rasulullah SAW came and that's how you celebrate the day of his birth. Yes, we should remember, we should recollect that day. Alhamdulillah, don't forget it. But not in an artificial day, in a real way. Just like Allah is reminding us, I gave you namas Allah says. Allah is reminding us, Explaining to us, you've forgotten in the same way, we've gone very far away today. Allah's Nabi says, to celebrate that day, how should you celebrate it? Commemorate it? That tariqah, Allah says, awaken yourself, remind your conscience, and remind yourself that what have you done to the deen? How are you showing your gratefulness for the name of Rasulullah SAW? And the way you should practice your life, you should revive that. Today sit down on this day, remember Rasulullah SAW, revive his practice, his deen, his methods. That's the way to remember that day. Otherwise, why is Allah Ta'ala so prohibited that? Why is the tariqah that we should know? So how do you remember this day? How do we celebrate that day? Subhanallah. The Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said that the kitab I came with and the fiqh I gave to you, jurisprudence I gave to you in the shariat and my sunnahs and my tariqah, my methodology, the sunnah sharifa that we call sunnah. Every action that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi showed to us, demonstrated to us and gave hukum that do this, do it the way that I do it. So those things, when we do them in the correct way, Tazkiyah, do Tazkiyah. How should we do Tazkiyah? The Qur'an that I brought to you, and the Qur'an that I spoke to you about, said Rasulullah and what did I say to you? Main things are what? What does the Qur'an explain to us? Halal and haram. Lawful and lawful. Whatever Allah Ta'ala has ordered us, that this is halal, lawful, that you can do this, is permissible, do it. And whatever Allah Ta'ala has prohibited us from forbid, forbidden, don't do it. That's haram. That's the definition. So when a human being in his life, he follows the orders, ahkams of the Qur'an according to the sunnah, according to the sharia, and he makes it ascension in his life to do that. And haram and halal, he distinguishes between the two and he has manners for those two. And he makes himself, he controls himself, and he lives his life according to that. Then understand that his tazkiyah is being performed. That's the meaning of Sufism. That's the meaning of tasawwuf. That's the Sufism. That's why we go to a sheikh, a teacher. If you go to a sheikh, a teacher, dhikr is a cure. Dhikr is a, what is it? Dhikr is a cure. The dhikr is not the maqsood. It's not the end point. It's not the objective. Dhikr is a ilaj, it's a cure. Through the dhikr of Allah, Allah has given it as a resource, as a tool. Allah says dhikr is a tool. Via this tool, you remember Allah. And when you remember Allah, then you remember Allah's namas. And when you remember Allah's namas, then the greatest name of Allah, Rasulullah Sallallahu you remember that. And when you remember that, then you will do the amal on the sunnah. So this is a, is a, like a chain effect, chain effect. So when you go to the shaykh, and you start learning dhikr, you start doing dhikr, then the next step is that, are those feelings being aroused in me, that I understand halal and haram, and according to that I live my life, then alhamdulillah, my tazkiyah is being performed. Subhanallah. If openly I'm just doing dhikr, and I put the brakes on, on dhikr, and I freeze on dhikr, and I'm not doing my muhasaba, that's why I'm given the tazkiyah sheets. 
People don't understand. They think, oh, I'm just doing dhikr, tik dhikr, dhikr, I'm forgiven. No, brothers, totally not. Time and time again, I've told you this many times before, that dhikr is not your end point. You have to get to the end point. What's the destination? Tazkiyah. And tazkiyah is this, the laws Allah has prescribed in the Qur'an, halal and haram, totally live your life according to that. Only those people will be successful in their wafdam. Only those people, and those people are defined as a dhakirin. Remember this, the, the definition of dhakirin, there'll be eight doors for those people to go into paradise. Dhakirin are those who have reached the destination, the end point. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. Understand that brothers? So go towards the end point, the destination via dhikrullah. If you're on the right path, inshallah you will stay in the right path. Keep hold of dhikr strongly. Keep the sobat with your shaykh strongly. Keep on traveling and put that niya in front of you. Halal and haram. I need to bring that into my life. I need to keep fighting, controlling, fighting. Allah promises you will rise as the muflihun, as the successful people. Yes? Not today, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Don't leave the path. Don't leave the path. Just like you want to go to London and you get the right path to London. Yes, you know the route, your car's going slow, stopping, puncture. But don't leave that route, inshallah, you'll arrive to that destination. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Doesn't matter how old your car is, run down. Yes, it's a ru- rubbish car. Everyone has a car. You see different cars going down the road. Don't worry about the car, but just worry about the route. The route you're taking. I am on the straight path. I am on the correct path. And if not today, tomorrow, even if that man's overtaking me, doesn't matter, I will arrive there as well one day. But the person who doesn't know the route, he's not following the right path, then what will he do? But the path Allah has prescribed, the clear path, where will it take you? Subhanallah. Where will it take you? Halal, haram. Totally bring it into your life. 100%. This is haram, forbidden, this is wrong. Leave it. Allah's Rasul said, don't do this. Don't do this. Wherever there's haram, there will be punishment. Remember this. Whatever is forbidden, attached to that is punishment. Don't do that action. If you do the action, if you do the halal, then there will be reward. Attached to it. Remember this. Allah's Nabi Sam said, do this action. Enjoin this. Rasulullah Sam, yes, if I tell you to do this and you don't do that, if you don't do that, then there will be azab with that. If you do the action, attached to that will be salam and thawab. Yes, and it will take you towards Allah the action. Man abba sunnati fa man habani, Rasulullah Sam said. What a big guarantee. Big guarantee. If you love my sunnahs, start doing amal of my sunnahs, for man habani, Rasulullah said, I promise you I will love you. Subhanallah. But shaitan and nafs says, no, 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 do a U-turn. Thousands of excuses. No, no, sunnah is not uh, important. Far as wajib. Oh, it's your choice. We've made categories nowadays. Categories. Yes? Levels. This is not the case in reality. The Quran, what does it say about the sunnah? Ajeeb. Beautiful point I'd like to explain. That what a great reward Allah said about the sunnah. The sunnah. General. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sunnah. What a massive reward. If you look here. This verse that I read, فَتَّبِيُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah. Allah says about His Nabi Wasallam, if you obey His Sunnah, follow His Sunnah, what's the reward? Allah says, فَتَّبِيُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah. If you follow Him, I will make you my beloveds, Allah says. So here, a beautiful point I'd like to share with you, like to present in your service. That all of the Sunnahs, if we practice all life long, then if we will we become the beloved of Allah, say subhanAllah. Is this the thought that comes? فَتِبِيُونِ يُحْبِكُمْ Allah. So here, Allah is saying clearly, do amal on the sunnahs, I'll make you my beloved. So does this mean that how long will I keep on doing amal on all the sunnahs? Sometimes I leave this, I do this, sometimes I leave that, I discard this, or I forget that, or I make a mistake. Then there's a staghfar in it. What do I do, Allah? So what does this mean? How will Allah you become my beloved? That if I follow the sunnah. What a great, as a arifin, rahmatullahi, what a beautiful statement I'd like to share with you his statement. Ajeeb, unique statement of Hazrat Arifi. He said, this is not the case. That this is his kashf, his vision, his experience. He said, this is not the case. The reality is a great piece of news Allah has given here. That how beloved is Allah's Rasul to Allah. Allah's Nabi is so beloved to him that his practice, his one practice is so beloved to Allah that the good news Allah has given to the mu'mineen. Allah says, when a human being, any sunnah, if you do amal on it, immediately you are the mahabub of Allah at that time. When you follow the sunnah. In other words, when you leave the house, 
and you wear the shoes in the way that Rasulullah some sunnah of wearing the shoes is stated when you do amal on that sunnah then at that time you are on that level of Allah's belovedness and when you implement that sunnah and you die then most definitely Allah will give you the rank of his beloved this is sunnah my brothers this is sunnah so this is how proud you should be that such a generation we're in now such a generation we're in line the fikr we should have Allah says Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said we should have so much concern that there'll be no one you can see who's doing amal on the sunnah. That's how much drought there'll be. Just Quran, 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 Quran. We don't know what Sharia and Sunnah people say. Just take the Quran and they will just hold the Quran and say Quran is enough. But nobody can understand the Quran without Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah. The Quran is telling us this. وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْقُرْآنِ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَّكِيهِمْ He brought the Quran, he gave the hikmah, he gave the tazkiyah. And how can we say that we are following the Qur'an? That Rasulullah some physical being and practice is the sunnah, is the tafsir of the Qur'an, and the explanation of the Qur'an is the sunnah. What else do we know? Yes, so the Qur'an is the physical kitab, and the commentary is the sunnah. The commentary is the sunnah. There's no difference. Salah is ordered in the Qur'an. But how do you pray Qur'an? If you don't pray the Qur'an in the way of Rasulullah Sam, then will your salah be said, you say Fajr today, oh it's a good day, uh, let's pray Fajr after Isha, will your Fajr be accepted? No. What's wrong with that? We can pray Fajr when we want. No, the condition is there. Allah's Nabi Sam explained to us the times. Rasulullah Sam came physically, he prayed salah physically, this is Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib. If you don't do it in this way, these units, this sunnah, then tell me how would you pray salah? By following the Qur'an. Tell me, how are you? There's no tariqah, no physical demonstration in the Qur'an. And after that, fiqh Allah Ta'ala created jurists, the aima, the scholars who explain the details. Imam Bukhari was created, what a great people Allah created, who gave us the deen. So this is the situation. We need to understand a human being only, he will be successful who imitates the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Sunnah. Wherever we go, Muslim in the world, deen cannot change. Has the deen changed today? Wherever you go, if the years change and the, does the deen change, deen is the same that Allah Ta'ala made once upon a time. Wherever I go, whichever country, whichever sphere of the world, I will practice my deen. And wherever I go, I'll explain them as well that this is my deen people, this is nothing to argue about. I have no opposition with you. This is my deen that I'm practicing, that's it. I'm not coming here to criticize you. If you got pain or if some loss is coming to you due to my deen, then tell me, am I giving you loss due to my deen? Say subhanAllah. If I pray salah, am I giving loss to you? From my imam, am I giving loss to you? From my beards, am I giving you loss? Tell me no. He will reply, there's no loss. Then say, then let me practice then. Let me practice. If you don't let me practice, then fine, I'll depart from here. That's fine, I'll leave here. We can't live here then in this country. Yes, we came for this reason. That wherever we go, whichever sphere of the world, our hukum is you are Muslims. And what, does go, what travels with a Muslim? The Quran travels with him. Subhanallah. And Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi orders travels with the Muslim. So the Quran orders, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi order is this. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi ordered this. He said this, don't do wrong, do good. And if you people, if I'm practicing and this is giving you pain or giving you a restriction or a hurdle, then tell us. Say subhanam. Subhanam. They'll say, no, no, there's no worry, no issue, no problem. Just, oh, well, we just don't like the way you look. Then what can I do if you don't like the way I look? Yes, if you don't like the way I look, then what shall I do? What can I do? Yes, that if we say to you that we don't like the way you look, will you like that? No. So you should like us and we'll like you. Vice versa. We don't say you look bad. We don't mind the way you look. If you wear knickers or trousers, walk around naked in front, behind. We have no issue. We have no issue. If we have no issue, then why do you have an issue with the way we look? What a great deen Islam is, isn't it? Lakum deen wa kumul yadeen. Your deen with you and our deen is with us. Say what? Our deen is with us. Lakum, lakum deenukum al deen. If we, subhanallah, like our deen, we'll explain it to you. Allah is one, Allah's Rasul is one. There's no one apart from Allah, no partners, uh, the rest is shirk. All the Nabis came, we believe in Isa alayhi we believe in Musa alayhi salam. They're all our prophets, great prophets, and they're on the rank of prophets. If we don't believe in them as prophets, we're not Muslims either. We respect everyone, the prophets and Allah's orders, etc. 
Yes, we explain this to people. So if you like our dawah, then accept our faith, alhamdulillah. If you don't like it, lakum deenukum waliya deen. Your deen is with you and our deen is with us. We're sat in our masjids. You do what you want. Carry on, fine, no problem. It will there ever be a quarrel and argument. So who creates arguments, quarrels? Those people who don't follow deen create the arguments. They are so called Muslims. They're not real Muslims. The true Muslim will never create argumentation and disputes. Never. Never will he quarrel with another religion. Why? Because our Nabi Sunnah is this. The Holy Prophet Wasallam never created a quarrel with a Yahudi, Nasara, disbeliever. No way. He presented his deen. Physically. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. There's no severity in deen. So who are those people who create these differences? Argumentation. Who are those people who create these problems? This is not the Sunnah of Rasulullah Wasallam. This is not Sharia. This is not Islam. This most definitely is other people who come in between, call themselves Muslim, they're not Muslim, they're not practicing the Qur'an. They're not practicing the deen, they don't practice the sunnah or in the Qur'an, then they'll present quarrels and disputes between the other people and us, and they are doing these actions. They're not people who are imamas, they're not the people who have the beards, they're not those who wear libas. You speak to them, and you think that more than them, you, want, you think, oh, there's no one better than this person. Because our deen, it teaches honesty and balance and just being just. It doesn't say, whatever country you go to, follow the laws of that country. We're not told go to that country and break the laws. No, adhere to the laws of that country. The country's laws and principles, follow them. If they're not opposition to your deen, then follow what they say, their mashia, their hukam, the laws, their taxation, and everything, VAT, do everything correctly. That's Islam. That's what it teaches us. So does our deen teach fighting? Does it teach quarreling? Disputes? Fasad? Disorder? And taking people's rights and money and wealth? No. If it doesn't, then the true honest Sufi, the Sadiq, honest upright Muslim who has good sobat, he will never teach his murids the wrong actions. Never. Ever. Now you will learn deen from the true shaykh. Now it's your choice whether you like that deen or not. That's your choice, but that's the deen of Islam. What? Subhanallah. That Rasulullah was sent Allah said, the greatest favor of mine on the world, on the Muslimin, there are two favors. al mu'minin, especially on the believers, Allah is addressing them, that to you, I've given a kitab, you've accepted it, you've believed and said, Kalima Muhammad Rasulullah, then why do you not follow his sunnah? Why don't you follow his sharia? Why do you not wake up and understand Allah says? What day are you celebrating Allah says? Allah says you will be reckoned severely. So my brothers, Alhamdulillah, this is the month of Rabiul Awal. So this message, remember this message, come let's celebrate this day. 12th of Rabiul Awal, definitely remember it, celebrate it. But let's revive it correctly. What is the right? Let's together again refine ourselves, revive ourselves, refresh our deen. The Allah, we most definitely have gone behind in many things. Now, however, whatever we do in our lives, according to Sunnah and Sharia, we will do whatever Rasulullah has brought to us. Because this is a big favor of yours, the greatest favor, and you will ask us on the Day of Judgment, that why didn't you imitate the Sunnah of Rasulullah according to his tariqah? While you're walking, talking, standing, sitting, dhahir, physical, internal, everything, internal, external, everything A to Z should be according to Rasulullah sallallahu That's when we can say that we are grateful for this favor of Allah. Otherwise you can make functions, dramas, nafs, your own hisab, but this is not repaying the favor of Allah. The Quran says, the greatest favor made you ummati, a nation member of Rasulullah's ummah, and the way to repay that favor is spend your whole life in following sunnah and sharia of Rasulullah sallallahu That's the end of story. May Allah ta'ala give us all the ability to practice this path. Ameen. Come, let's do the dhikr of Allah.